Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. It's been a while since we've gone hunting for guitars together. Let's see if we can find any silver burst lust. Just kidding. We're, we're done with silver bursts. We won't talk about them for a good long time outside of like boxing the ones up that I already have. But to start our journey today, let's check out my feed on Reverb. If you're not familiar with how your feed works, say you're looking for just a Gibson Les Paul in general. If you search for that term, right over here it says follow this search. If you click that, you can add it to your daily feed email. And if you don't want emails like me, you don't have to select that, but then everything that shows up under that category will automatically come into your feed. And you can look for very specific things. Say you're looking for a Buckethead Les Paul or your birth year Les Paul, like let's say 1984. You can type that in and follow that search as well. So sometimes that can be helpful in finding rare guitars. I just have a general search of every single Gibson because anything that Gibson's made I'm interested in. Most times. This isn't a reverb exclusive thing either. You can do it on eBay. Just once again, type in what you need and then they have a button right here that says save this search. And then anytime that you're on the eBay homepage, you can click this saved button right here and it will show you everything that you're interested in knowing about. You can also set up email alerts for when something you're looking for gets listed. That's how you can find your dream guitar online without actively searching every single day. But just as a word of advice, these feed systems usually have a little bit of a delay. So somebody who's actively searching every second of every day, yeah, they're still going to beat you to the punch. But this is a great way for people who actually have a job to do and can't just sit around on the internet all day. But that's my helpful hint of the day. Let's get to some guitar hunting. What do we got this afternoon, Sunday, 2 p.m.? That's a good time to search because people that don't work on the weekends, this is like prime time for them to list stuff. First off, a Zappa. These Roxy SGs, they're so cool. I've had a few of these things and it never ceases to amaze me at how much people will pay for these. But what makes them interesting is the satin finish. You could get the vintage Vibrola system on it. You could check out the review and demo if you want to learn more in-depth details. But they are fantastic little playing guitars and I love the look of this Holly veneer. The only difference is they didn't stain it a black color. 5,000, that's a bit much. Here's a different one at 33. The problem is, is I can't tell if this listing is real or not. Because this is an okay price. But these are Guitar Chimps photos, so you don't even know if he actually purchased this from them and is selling this exact guitar. All he really needs to do is take his own photos and upload it and then he would be just fine. I truly believe that is the reason why this one has not sold yet. Because really clean ones can fetch all the way up to 5,000, but usually it's like that 3,000, 3,500 range that they start selling at. But continuing on here, that's a pretty nice little Les Paul Studio, thousand bucks. Yeah, it seems to be okay depending on what year it is. That's kind of hard to tell from that photo. It's definitely 90s, as long as it has the ebony fretboard. No, it doesn't have the ebony fretboard, so. Well, does it? This is when the description helps, 1995 Les Paul Studio with ebony finish. Okay, he is saying it is an ebony fretboard, so maybe that was just a bad photo or it needs conditioned or something. 800 to 1,000 bucks is fair, so if you're looking for something like that, you can check it out. <laughs> Unfortunately, this guy's a little bit confused. The Kalamazoo factory was not open in 1995. It closed in 84. But he probably just looked up some information online, saw that it was 500 or less, but this is when they kind of swapped up their serial number system a little bit because they didn't have that plant anymore. So, honest mistake, honest mistake. That was made in Nashville, though. Got a standard faded. 2000s, not that bad of a price for one of these. This top, it's okay. I'm guessing this would look a lot better in person. These are great road dog guitars. I know we talked about this in the review and demo, but Michael Weber, the guy who came over and recorded a few demos for future episodes, he actually uses one of these live when he plays. So I thought that was kind of cool to meet somebody who's the living testament of these are fantastic guitars. I've had a lot of people reach out to me saying they're looking for these SG and Les Paul raw power guitars. They're kind of cool, but whenever I see one for sale and I forward it to them, I like never hear back or they say it's too much. <laughs> a thousand bucks really is not that bad for this one. I really like the kind of ice blue colors, but... The strangest thing to me is the 12th fret inlays on the SGs. It's like, why? 
But at the same time, it makes me like it because it's quirky. Because A, you get the maple fretboard. That's cool in itself. But then freaky middle inlay that doesn't belong there? Yes, sign me up. We will find one of these one day. But I'm rather picky about condition with maple fretboards. That's a pretty nice top for an R9. It's not what I would normally consider. Like, okay, I want this guitar. But you like that top once you see it. What's going on with this DC light? We get the small trapezoid inlays, large headstock with Gibson Mother of Pearl logo. Hey, that actually looks pretty good. I would assume the lights are somehow weight relieved. You know, I need to do some more research on these because the regular standards are already chambered. So how do they make it even lighter? Did they fill it with balsa wood? Can't seem to find any good definite information online. Might have to check one of those out one day just to see what makes it different because there's got to be something. I think an SG Naked would be a fun review. It would probably be demonetized right away because it says naked in the title. Cool. 79 burst. Completely aged. That one's looking pretty nice, all things considered. I think somebody was sending me a message about this. Oh, sweet. An XR1. You don't see these things show up too often. I think I've done the XR1 and the 2, but I have not done the 3. But the 3 is the most boring. But this is the Steve Clark unofficial signature version, the Gold Burst XR1. Basically the precursor to Les Paul Studio. This one's definitely seen some wear and tear. They're chunky, heavy guitars. That's all I gotta say. Chicago Music Exchange normally sells them around 1600 bucks. So honestly, that's not the worst price I've ever seen on one of one of these. And it says it's got the original Dirty Fingers pickups too. Something doesn't look right though. That's why most of them have the multicolored pickups. Whereas this one doesn't. So that could be a factory thing, but it could also very well be somebody has replaced them. I'd be curious if that coil split still works. Because if those have double leads coming out of them, I mean it was likely factory stock. Or maybe somebody just put one of those black bobbin stickers on it. But if you've been looking for one of these, this really is a pretty fair price. You could just haggle them down a hundred bucks and then you'd be okay. Especially for that particular finish. Natural Burst SGs, that's not a terrible price on one of those. So they can kind of be hard to find. I think somebody was looking for one of those a day or two ago. But cool, 2002 Custom Flying V. This looks sweet. It really reminds me of those vintage Deans. But the uh, mixing of black and white with the gold, then the gold thumb wheels with the black bridge and the really worn out vibe of this. This looks fantastic. The thing I always have against these Flying V Customs is I hate the headstocks. They just don't look right with this tiny custom block inlay. But there's not really a way to make it bigger. Unless they did the logo Hendrix style this way, then they might be able to get it just a hair bigger. But it's mainly the tuners that are your problem. That's such a yellowed over nut, it looks brass. Holy cow, somebody definitely played this thing. That's kind of nice to see. Oh, cool, you get a free shoe. <laughs> I don't think he meant to upload that photo. Chipped out all the finish along the ferrules. That's kind of cool because it hides the ferrules at the same time. But despite all that, no breaks, cracks, or repairs that I can see from this photo anyways. Is it still worth $5,000? I'm gonna have to say no though, because there's one right here that's like almost mint condition. It's only like a thousand bucks more, so you can't make the argument that yes, it's one of the earliest ones ever made, because this one's in much cleaner condition. It's got the COA and all that other good stuff. But what's going on with this though? Is that factory stock? Why did they not make it gold? I think the other one might have a chance at selling around maybe 3,000, 35 maybe. But it looks like our last one for reverb today falls on this. What did they do to this custom? Okay, so it's been refinished. Kind of a cool natural color. They put EMG pickups on it. They've got a lady, a number one. So they must have some sort of a Townsend vibe. Chrome tip and poker chip. That's an interesting strap button design. I like the way that this thing's aged. The frets have been replaced. You get the 20th anniversary, making this a 1974. You can see our pancake body along here. Harley Davidson stickers. Replace nut, that usually happens when you refret something. And it looks like somebody put a strap button back here at one point in time. Man, this thing has had so many different buttons. And how much do they want? Not, not the worst price for an early 70s custom. 
from a dealer, that's about what I would expect from a private user around 2000 or so. So if you don't mind all the wear and tear and the EMG pickups, you should be fine. But turning that back to passive pickups, you're also going to have to replace all the wiring in there. Hop over here to eBay real quick, see if there's anything interesting here. Looks like a couple of projects you can bid on. Honestly, I don't even think you should pay that much for it. SG Robot. That's kind of a cool color, but you have to deal with the tuners. This one has the potential to be a nice deal, though, depending on how much people bid it up. What's going on with this blueberry burst? Maybe it's just the photo, but it looks like somebody did not do that blueberry fade very well. Like, there's almost no blue staining that caught right there, but it's got a lot right there. Weird purple sideburns. I know that's what the fade finish is supposed to look like, but I think it faded out too much. This looks like a regular Les Paul Studio Light. Since they don't have it named Studio Light, you might be able to get a slight deal on that, but that also has the ebony fretboard. Oh, it looks like a Chicago Music Exchange listing. That's not that bad of a price, to be honest. 17 for one of these? Does it have like a crazy repair or something? Looks like you get a little bit of staining on the sun because somebody left a clip-on tuner on it. It's kind of funny, now that the uh, owner of Chicago Music Exchange doesn't also own Reverb anymore, I see them listing on eBay much more often. Probably because it's cheaper at this point and still gets them additional exposure just outside of their own website. There's kind of a cool Neil Young tribute. Definitely didn't leave the factory that way. And here's a strange <laughs> listing. FedEx shipping upgrade. I'm guessing this is for somebody who actually purchased something else and they're just trying to charge more for FedEx instead of waiting forever to ship it by the other courier. Our last hope for today is ending soonest. Oh, it's the XR3. We were just talking about the XR1. Pretty much all the XR3s are this candy apple red color. They got Tim Shaw pickups. So this is like one of the earliest studio studios right before the studio came out. As they don't really have any fancy electronics or anything. I mean, they can sell between like a thousand and fifteen hundred bucks. So that's like at the very top of the market. He's only got three minutes to respond to my offer. Whoa, that's strange. Normally. The very first iterations of these cases, they have that little bump at the top of the headstock. I personally don't like it. I think it breaks headstocks, but it's supposed to secure it into the case. But also at the same time, this giant pink blanket, as they call it, it's a big fluffy thing before they switched it over to that thin satin sheet. Normally that's only the early ones. It also looks like it was only ever attached in two locations. So maybe the earliest examples did not have that. That case is almost more interesting than the guitar. I don't think his information of only 50 XR3s being made is anywhere near correct, though. That's probably a story he was told a long time ago. Back before the internet, since he's owned it since 89. He'd be kind of a good person to buy this from, though. But I'll make him an offer. And unfortunately, he wasn't interested. What else do we got going on here? Is that the six-string version? Darn, just four. I really want one of the six string ones. Those things are so interesting and fascinating to me. I honestly didn't even know about those until the Joe Bonamassa video that Gibson just recently did. Month, a month or two ago? Ah, man. This dealer is going crazy. An Orville for 4,600? An M3 reissue? I mean like top value, 1,600 bucks. And he wants 38? 52 on a left-handed Les Paul Custom. This one's the worst one. That guitar might be worth 600 bucks at best. And that? This guy's giving the Japanese brokers a bad name. Normally they offer a fair service, but this one, he's going a little bit too crazy with his prices. <laughs> All right, Chocolateites, thank you for tuning in today. We will catch you tomorrow for a special episode of a Fender guitar. Take care. <laughs>